You see this question in forums all over the internet. I'm thinking about getting my ham radio license, but how far can I talk? Stay tuned to find out. Hi, I'm Jim N4BFR, one of the instructors at Ham Radio Prep, and I'll walk you through what steps you can take to go from local to global with amateur radio. If you're considering getting your ham radio license or you're trying to choose a radio service that's right for you, the answer is simple, amateur radio, also known as ham radio. It has the longest range, most power, and most flexibility of any radio service that's available to the general public once you get a license. Your range on ham radio starts at five miles with a simple handheld and extends all the way around the world once you have the right license and equipment. The potential reach and power of ham radio is exactly why a license is required. Because amateur radio allows for so much power and flexibility, it is important that ham radio operators know the rules and regulations to avoid interference with military and commercial communications. With great power comes great responsibility, which is why it's so important to get your license. We are frequently asked to compare ham radio to services like GMRS, FRS, and CB radio. Let's start with GMRS. The General Mobile Radio Service, or GMRS, is a UHF band service that is second only to ham radio in power, and like ham radio, also requires a license. This license is a family one compared to the individual ham license. GMRS allows voice and simple short messaging, but it's limited to 50 watts of power. Compare that to a ham with their amateur extra license who can use up to 1500 watts on some frequencies. That's 30 times more powerful than GMRS. And in fact, 1500 watts is more power than some AM broadcast stations at night. FRS, also called family radio service, has only a half watt of power, which means you're gonna max out at a range of about two miles. It actually shares some frequencies with GMRS, but because it's low power, you don't need a license. These are the kind of radios you see in plastic packs in the big box store. CB radio has been an unlicensed service since the 70s because its power is limited to four watts. Using CB at maximum power, down around 27 megahertz, you'll get about three to four miles range. So, now that you know about the other service, let's talk about some of the different ham radio operating options and what range you might see. Your first level amateur radio license will get you what's called the technician level. The focus of this level is mostly local communications, but that doesn't mean you can't talk to people globally. Most people will start with a handheld like one of these. You can talk walkie-talkie style to friends across a park or down the street. We call that simplex communications. Distance using the most popular frequency bands maxes out at around five miles with radio size and battery limiting you. Don't worry if that seems low, we have a lot more tools for you. Let's bump up the radio next. Graduating to a mobile radio will get you more distance. Those are typically powered by a car or external power supply. Basic power goes up to 50 watts here. Imagine you're at the top of a mountain with a nice line of sight. Using a mobile ham radio, you can easily expect to communicate 50 miles or more. So far, we've been talking simplex, unassisted communications. Let's introduce repeaters. These are unmanned radios. Hams have taken a great deal of their own time and expense to place at high points around communities. You send in a signal on an input frequency and your message is repeated on a slightly different frequency across your city or county. Depending on the repeater power, height, and other factors, we're at around 50 miles of range again. So we've reached the point where you can be consistently heard around your city or county. Now, let's let the repeaters talk to each other. This is called a linked repeater network which may allow you to talk all the way up the coast of California or from Mississippi to Tennessee. Let's call that range 500 miles. Finishing up with repeaters, some repeater owners have connected their repeaters to digital networks over the internet, allowing them to have discussions around the world. 
With names like DMR, DSTAR, and Fusion, the right combination of digital radio, operating mode, and repeater could get your voice transmitted worldwide. So, we've covered the opportunities using repeaters on Earth. With the introduction of a directional antenna, we'll open up the sky. The typical stick antenna you see on the back of a car can be modified to direct more of a signal in a single direction, and this antenna is called a Yagi. A Yagi antenna opens up access to amateur radio dedicated satellites. It's easy to think of these as a space repeater, and hams have been building them and getting them launched into orbit for more than 60 years. In addition to the standalone satellites, there is a space-based repeater attached to the International Space Station. Given the placement of these repeaters high up, you could talk to hams over 1,500 miles when the positions are right. So, Texas to Minnesota is totally an option. If you get really lucky while using the ISS repeater, you might get to talk to an astronaut. Several of them are hams, and they jump on from time to time. You can count talking to an astronaut on the ISS as a 250 mile or so contact. As a technician level ham, there's one more option if you're looking for worldwide communications with some old school flair. All technician level ham radio licensees have some privileges on the 10, 15, 40, and 80 meter shortwave bands using Morse code. Learn your dits and dahs, pick up a code key, and get your HF radio going. Using up to 200 watts of power, when propagation is right, you will communicate around the world. So your experience with your technician level license will probably start with some pretty short communications. But as you grow your skills and explore different opportunities, you can definitely talk around the world with the right combination of gear. If you're interested in even more challenging opportunities, like bouncing your voice off the atmosphere, building your own radios, and experiencing all the other things HF communications have to offer, consider upgrading to the general or extra license levels. As we mentioned earlier, it offers up to 1500 watts of power on shortwave frequencies, which lets you talk around the world with the right equipment. November 4, Bravo, Foxtrot, Romeo. Sorry, somebody just came up on you. I think you got me. November 4, Bravo, Foxtrot, Rumble. You're, you're 59 Golf Alpha, Georgia. Are you ready to get your ham radio license or upgrade? Then head on over to www.hamradioprep.com to get started with our online courses. It's the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to pass your ham radio license exam. Our team of ham radio experts will teach you all the material on the test in just 10 video lessons, with quizzes, games, and practice tests to reinforce your knowledge. You can study right from the comfort of your own home and even on your smartphone. Courses are available for all three levels of ham radio licenses, technician, general, and amateur extra. The program is so effective, we guarantee you'll pass your exam on your first try or your money back. What are you waiting for? Visit hamradioprep.com today and join over 60,000 students who have successfully completed the course. Thanks for watching our video. If you found this helpful, please make sure to tap the subscribe button and click the bell icon so you can stay up to date on future videos. If you're looking to get your ham radio license, head on over to hamradioprep.com and check out our license courses, which are designed to help you get your ham radio license quickly and easily. You can also download our free mobile app available on both Android and iOS. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope to hear you on the air soon. 73 to you, I'm Jim and for BFR.